When it comes to interstellar warships, they tend to be categorized in much the same way as a maritime warship. Smaller vessels are referred to as fast attack craft and corvettes, all the way up to the larger battleships and fleet carriers. Sometimes the terms may be different, star destroyers and battle stars come to mind, but for the most part, interstellar navies divide their spacecraft into many distinct types that we can easily recognize. Here's the thing though. When it comes to classifying their starships, some of these interstellar navies get it wrong. And that's hard to do, because they've been given a ton of leeway in this regard. You kind of have to go out of your way to pick a wrong answer. Classifying ships into distinct types is an imperfect business. As the Templin Institute has discussed at length, there is really no all-encompassing definition of what characteristics each ship type has. What one navy considers a frigate, another might label a destroyer. And these definitions, as vague as they are, tend to change over time as technology evolves. A 19th century cruiser is going to be very different from a 21st century cruiser, which in turn will be far different from a 24th century cruiser. Political concerns can also interfere in this process. The United Federation of Planets might not be thrilled with the idea of building a fleet of defiant class destroyers, but if you call them escorts, well, that makes things a bit more palatable for a nervous civilian government. And before we go any further down this road, if you need a refresher on warship types, I'd recommend our video, Building Your Interstellar Navy, which covers ship types in detail. But even with all this extra latitude afforded to them in this regard, we occasionally see warships classified in a way that's just not consistent with others of the same type in the same navy. It's not just that they don't fit our modern definition of what a frigate is, for example, they don't fit their own definition. In other cases, a ship has been classified in a way wildly divergent from the role it performs. Think a battleship being labeled a corvette. I can accept the definition of these terms might change, but that seems a bit much. And finally, we have ships whose classification is just needlessly confusing or redundant. And so, on this episode of Incoming, we'll be taking a look at five interstellar warships that were just classified wrong. And you know what, because I'm pretty sure I'll be accused of being too pedantic about at least one of these, let's throw in an honorable mention for an even six. Look at that, a few minutes in, and the title of this video is already outdated. Okay, so let's get started. Both the Galactic Empire, Galactic Republic, the Confederacy of Independent Systems, all these nations and their respective navies are pretty consistent when it comes to what a cruiser is. According to the Anaxis War College system, cruisers are a formidable capital ship possessing roughly an equal balance of speed, firepower, and protection. They are typically between 400 and 1200 meters long and could operate away from a friendly port for an extended period of time. A good example would be the MC-85 Star Cruiser utilized by the New Republic. So with this definition in mind, how do we explain the Gozanti class cruiser? At just 64 meters long, it's well below the size defined by the Anaxis War College system, and this ship clearly does not even approach the speed, firepower, protection, or endurance of an MC-85 or other cruisers. If you were being especially generous, you might call the Gazanti a corvette, but it's still just half the size of most corvettes used by the Republic and the Empire, and with a crew of only 12, I think it makes the most sense to categorize the Gazanti as a fast attack craft. Next up on our list, we find ourselves in the exact opposite position, a much larger and more capable warship that's pretending to be a corvette, the Roger Young type. Now officially, these are known as corvette transports, and I suppose you could make the argument that since corvette transports don't exist in our own world, I can't really prove the Roger Young isn't one. But I think this is an example of a term that stretches too far beyond its original meaning. Corvettes are the smallest class of vessel generally considered to be a proper warship. Within the Terran Federation, however, ships like the Roger Young seem to be some of the largest. And as we previously mentioned, corvettes are not meant to conduct long voyages, yet the Roger Young type is being deployed to the other side of the galaxy. Corvettes are generally used for border security, law enforcement, and short-range patrols, and the largest ones might have a small hangar capable of carrying no more than a few VTOLs. The Roger Young, by contrast, possesses heavy guns, a dedicated air wing, and thousands of mobile infantry together with their accompanying dropships. This starship is fulfilling a completely different role than the term Corvette would imply. The only way this might make sense to me is if this ship type was the result of political considerations but the Terran Federation doesn't seem like the type of government to care too much about overt militarization. To me, the Roger Young is best described as a planetary assault ship, the interstellar version of an amphibious assault ship. 
At number three, we look to the Martian Congressional Republic Navy, and their Corvette-class light frigate. So right away, we should notice a small problem here. Corvettes and frigates are both distinct ship types. This is akin to calling something a cruiser-class battleship, or escort carrier-class fleet carrier. Now according to sources within the MCRN, this was a deliberate choice. The Corvette class was named that because it's a frigate designed to fulfill the role traditionally associated with Corvettes. But this explanation seems pretty poor to me. If you're building a frigate to fulfill the role of a Corvette, you're just building a Corvette. This name is just needlessly confusing. And to add insult to injury, the Corvette class frigate is actually neither. Like the Gazanti, its small size and small crew compared to other ships in the MCRN makes it much more akin to a fast attack craft. Now generally, I'm a huge fan of the United Nations Space Command Navy. Their ships have great aesthetics, they have a unique and consistent naming convention, but I do have to take exception to the Infinity-class supercarrier. Now I admit, I might be on shaky ground for this one, but here's my reasoning. Supercarrier isn't usually a distinct ship type. It's not an official designation used by any national navy in our world, but instead popular within the news media for when they need a catchy and easy way to explain that this aircraft carrier is very big. It can be a helpful term when you're comparing modern aircraft carriers to those of the past, but again, this is not an official designation. I suppose it is possible that the UNSC Navy adopted the term supercarrier at some point, but fleet carrier to me would be more appropriate. And because it also sounds cooler, I don't mind including the Infinity on this list. At number five, we have the Omega-class destroyer utilized by the Earth Alliance. And I've discussed this ship before, so I'll try not to dwell too much on it. Destroyers, like frigates and some corvettes, fall under the broader escort category. These are smaller vessels, intended to escort larger capital ships. And yet the Omega-class is one of the largest and most powerful warships within the Earth Alliance and was specifically designed to replace the Nova-class Dreadnought and the Hyperion-class Heavy Cruiser. Now I have heard the argument that there is a reasonable explanation for this. The Omega-class was produced during an era when Earth was still recovering from its war with the Mimbari. It was deliberately misnamed to avoid provoking the Mimbari or another spacefaring power, and also to hide its true nature from the population of Earth itself who might not have supported increased militarization. The reason I don't love this explanation is because it feels like a superficial solution to what might be a non-existent problem. The first time the Mimbari or anyone else are able to scan the Omega class, any kind of deception is exposed, so why bother? And as a citizen of Earth, if we had very nearly lost a war that would have resulted in the extinction of my species, I would be very much in favor of rebuilding a credible deterrence against further aggression. But just in case I failed to convince you in regards to the Omega class or any other ship on this list, Let's move on to our honorable mention, the Magellan Combat Cruiser, first encountered by the USS Enterprise in a planetary system of the same name. And again, hopefully this one should be pretty obvious. Cruiser is the type of warship. Ergo, every cruiser is a combat cruiser. You don't need to go out of your way to specify that, which is why it was so annoying that the crew of the Enterprise repeatedly did. Scans indicate a small combat cruiser. The combat cruiser. Combat cruiser. Combat cruiser. No one on that combat cruiser could have survived. Perhaps she was never on that combat cruiser. Just say cruiser, I don't know what you mean. The only circumstance in which maybe you'd need to get this specific is if the cruiser you want to target is right next to some civilian craft that a marketing team decided to also call a cruiser. The interstellar version of a PT cruiser or the Toyota Land cruiser maybe. Except in that instance, you'd expect a ship's combat information center or whatever the Starfleet equivalent is to assign every ship that detects a unique alphanumeric code to avoid any confusion, so yeah, even my attempt at explanation here makes no sense. But that, of course, is just my opinion. And even though I'm first mate on a mighty truth-classed fact cruiser named the USS Never Wrong, I'd love to hear your opinion. Do you agree with my assessment of these starships? Did I forget one key point that destroys my arguments? And can you think of some more examples of starships whose classification just makes no sense? Let me know in the comments below, and until next time, this has been Incoming. The Templin Institute investigates the nations, factions, and organizations of alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, 
consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards.